He's an Orange High School alumni. His name is Jawi. He, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the show called Save My Son with Dr. Steve Perry. Have any of you ever seen Save My Son? Well, he appeared on that show. He is an author. The book that he wrote was, is, War of the Bloods in My Veins, A Street Soldier's March Towards Redemption. He's an author, a mentor, and a clothing designer. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Jawi, and he also has a partner with him today, Arsenal. Let's give him a hand. Time, I did come here with a message to deliver to y'all. I graduated from here in 1999, and um, this message is telling me for males and females. It's telling me for freshmen to seniors that they have bed space in June for all of y'all. They got room down at the morgues for all of y'all. I got quite a few of my little partners, my little homeboys that serve the juvenile life right now as we speak. And what I realize is that a lot of y'all think that it's a game right now. I'm watching some of y'all and y'all think it's funny, you think life owes you something. And it's real outside those doors. I know y'all probably done had a few speakers before you, before me, that's probably told you this, told you that. But I'm none of those speakers. I done really lived it, I done been down, I done been in prison, been shot, been shot at, been hit in the neck, mistold my children's birth, gave my mama stress, gray hair. I got close to 30 day old boys. I done been through all of that. I'm one of the dudes that introduced that blood game in New Jersey. And now I see the younger generation coming up with the same madness that we created and that we started back in the early 90s. And we lose it all at a high rate. We lose it all at a high rate for youngsters, y'all. And all of those ones that we lose, and all of them just out there holding that. I deal with my youngsters on this level on a consistent basis. It's rough out there, but y'all have to be mindful that the choices y'all making today is going to affect you in the future. I ain't got four children, three girls and a boy, and I missed two of my children being born because I was locked up. Some of you females probably got children. You gotta stop being better role models because the youngsters are having to become adults as children. Don't take this as a, it's not even a lecture. I don't even look at these as a lecture. I look at these as beatdowns, heart to heart, because not too many people care about y'all. Straight like that. And I gonna meet too many people that don't know you from the can of paint that genuinely care about you. It's rough out there. It's hard to find people that's gonna invest time in you. Y'all look at these teachers, y'all look at these, the administration, and y'all think that they y'all enemies. And to be trills with y'all, they not. They not your enemy. All you class clowns, the ones who like to do all the goofing and playing around, making fun of those that is, Getting that work done, those are going to be the same dudes you're trying to get a job from in a few years. Them are going to be the same dudes you're trying to go to an interview with. That same kid you was clowning. Take this education thing serious, man. I mean, this is not about being geeks and all of that, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting your education. Like, I, my question is, like, since when has it been cool to, like, be like a fool? Like, since when did the role switch? It's like the, the, the silliest, the, the, the dumbest dude is like the most popular cat around. Like, when did that era come in? 
So that's the choice. That's what I came here to discuss with y'all, man, is to start making better choices, man. Y'all gonna be young, y'all in your 15, 16, 17, 18. Y'all gonna make the basic mistakes that life, that you have to make in life. We understand that and we get that. But it's a lot of things that y'all don't have to go through if you just be mindful of those that did it before you. A lot of y'all got older siblings, older uncles, older brothers that's been down, that's been through a lot of that. Y'all don't take heed to it. Y'all don't take heed to it. Death is real. I don't know how many of y'all done been affected by it, but death is real. I don't wear these names on my arm for nothing. So I want y'all to be focused, man. Don't just listen and then go back out there and, and you ain't heard, remember nothing I said. This doesn't change your life or what I'm telling you today, but what it does is it, it inspires you, it motivates you so that the next time you do make a better decision, that next time you don't take that, you know what I mean, that drug or, 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 or you don't lay down with that man. Y'all too damn young to be doing all that. Y'all too damn young to be doing all that. And y'all think it's cool. First time I went to jail, I was 11 years old for a shoot. 11 years old. I watched my mama OD on crack twice. So by the time I was 15, I was playing Russian roulette with myself. I tell y'all to say that life got real low for me. Life got real low for me. Y'all better take advantage of those things that you that, that, that God has given you, God given talents. And for me, that was athletics. That was my, that was my, that other thing that kept me coming back to school. Because I didn't really care about school, to be real with you. I didn't care about school. This really wasn't my thing. I, I tore up the hallways, I rode all over the walls, we did all that. Sat in the same bleachers, did all that. Played on the same court, I did all that. So to the fellas, again, be men, y'all young men, but y'all not men yet. Y'all still got growing to do. Like, I, I, I always hear these little 15 year old boys talking about they men, but yet you rely on somebody to take care of your ass. Just be 15, just be 15. Stop trying to grow up so fast. Take advantage of this which you got right now. Those that's going on to school after this, it's college aid for everybody. Just do something with your life. Do something constructive with your life. That's really what matters. Because I look at it as a form of being selfish. All those years I ran those streets, all those years I got, that, got it going out there, I didn't even think about what it was doing in my mom. Y'all, I'm sure, for those who I'm sure that I have moms. So those who know that moms may have passed away. Those that got moms, do you even think about what that dude is like out at the school? Because I didn't think about none of that. All the drugs I sold, all the stickers I did, all the gang banging I did, I ain't never think about none of that when I was 15, 14, 13. I didn't think about none of that. All I cared about was getting outside the house, getting with the homeboys, and doing what we did. I'll be in that house when I get there. And mind you, I'm just talking to bro. We didn't have what y'all have now. You know, I call y'all spoiled because we didn't have the technology y'all had. We couldn't jump on YouTube and be talking to people in other states. Like, you know, if you wanted to see somebody, you had to go see them. Y'all got the whole world like in your pocket right there. Y'all got access to everything. But don't know nothing. That's a serious problem for me. I want y'all to just be more mindful what the choices you make today, what it's doing to your family, to your siblings. Some of y'all got little brothers and little sisters. Who gonna look out for them? If you in Juvie, or if you down at the mall, because ain't none of y'all too young that you can't get whacked out here. I um, heard it before. These bullets ain't got no ages on them. They ain't got no ages on them. A lot of my homeboys wasn't even 18 before they took before they hit the dirt. 
So who gonna take care of them siblings for you? Your little brother and your little sister that need that protection, that need somebody to walk them home from school to come pick them up. Who gonna take care of them? So half of the choices you make, it ain't even for yourself, it's for somebody else. It's for your mama to give her a peace of mind, because whether you know it or not, these parents is worried about y'all. They know what's going on out here in these streets. They may not know the particulars, the specifics, but they know kids is dying out there, girls are having sex out there, drugs is going on out there. They know the basics. And they know every time you walk out that door that they child may possibly never come home. So for that alone, we got to start making better choices. My mama got a hair full of gray hair. Me and my brothers gave her that. My older brother and my younger brother. We gave her that. And now that I'm growing, I see my mom, and it's like, damn, mom, like, we did that. Can't take none of that back. So I do what I do now. I wrote a book. I got a clothing line. I do what I do now to give my mama a piece of mind back. That's all I can do. Again, there's a time and place for everything. Once you leave out of here, you can go play, have your fun, have your little clubs or whatever you do. But when y'all come up in here, man, just take this a little bit more serious. Take it a little bit more serious. Because once you get out there for real, you can't come back here and get it over. You can't do it over. We were just talking about, I was driving up here and I said, you know, I wouldn't change everything I went through. Damn, if I had a chance to, you know, go back, you know, I would have tweaked a few things here and there because I'm paying for it now. These felonies I got, you know, I, I, felonies, they real. What I think is y'all juveniles that, that, you know, you can just, you know, this ain't the 90s where, you know, we was out there stealing them cars. That was us doing all that. And, you know, they call, police get you, they take you to juvenile. Parents can come and just sign you out and take you home. That was us shooting, you know, doing all that. Shoot, taking them, stealing cars up and down 85 and all that. Nowadays, they putting y'all in jail. They are beefing up laws to prevent criminals. And that goes for females as well. They not letting y'all off the hook at all either. We got homegirls too that's doing time too. I just want y'all to just be more mindful about these choices. I cannot stress choices, choices, choices enough. When you leave here, you go home, you're gonna be presented with a situation. Just remember, choices, choices, choices. That choice I make today, it will affect me at some point. And before I go, I just, one more question. How many of y'all know what karma is? Karma. Do you believe in karma? I believe in it. You believe in karma? Yeah, you. You do? Karma is real. I believe karma is real. Early I said that a lot of the BS that I did when I was your age, I'm paying for it now. I'm paying for it now. I'm paying for all those the violent acts that I did, all, all of that. All of that stuff is happening. It's, it's all coming back to me now. Losing pe people left and right, it's all coming back to me now. The nightmares, the, the hospitals, the doctors, all of that stuff is coming back to me now. There's a whole other aspect of the game. It's not just all funny games. So, before I close, I just came to say that enjoy your freedom while you're out here in these bleachers. Before you be in a cell, having somebody tell you when you can eat, sleep, shit. I'm done. Y'all, we out. All right, I'm not gonna take too much of y'all time, cause um, you know, John, we basically wrapped everything up in a nutshell that I wanted to talk to y'all about too. But uh, for y'all who don't know me, my name is Arsenal. I'm an entertainer, I rap, um, and I just wanna, you know, really speak to y'all about choices and, and your future. Like me and John, we we didn't come here today for no money. 
You know what I'm saying? We're not getting paid for this. We both busy. We got busy schedules, but we came out here because we care about y'all. None of y'all are related to us. You know what I'm saying? I don't know none of y'all. I don't, I don't recognize none of y'all faces, but I was in high school before. And you know what I'm saying? I just want to make sure that y'all understand what y'all got before you lose it. You know what I'm saying? The choices that y'all make right now, like he said, is going to affect you for the rest of your life. Now, myself, I really just, you know, my whole, my whole outlook on this is I want to know how many of y'all have future goals. Because when I was 15, I knew what I wanted to do. And I'm doing what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? What you want to do, bro, when you get out of high school? When you get out of high school, when you graduate from the 12th grade? You want to go to college you and be a physical therapist? All right. You, sweetheart. Yeah, you. I didn't hear you. A beautician? A musician. Okay, that's what I do. All right. A lot of y'all, you know what I'm saying, are going to know what y'all want to do. And some of y'all right now not going to know what y'all want to do. But what I'm saying is, you don't have to be a worker your whole life. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a physical therapist, go own it. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go work, work, work for somebody. Work towards owning yours. You know what I'm saying? I'm 26 years old. I've been through the same trials and tribulations as my brother John Wee. From the banging, stressing my mother out, and honestly, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the last five years of my life, it's been real good. Like, I haven't had a regular job where I've worked for somebody in four years. You know what I'm saying? I'm part owner of the UW Battle League. I'm pretty sure some of y'all watch some of my battles. I'm part owner of that. You know what I'm saying? I have my own clothing line. I have my own. And that's what I really want to talk to y'all today about. I want y'all to be focused on getting your own and not just wanting to work for somebody. Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to work at a doctor's office. I want to go to nursing school, be a nurse. Own it. Own the hospital if you could. You know what I'm saying? You put in your own time, your own hours, you construct your own schedules. And you know what I'm saying? You the boss, you can tell people what to do. You know what I'm saying? And like Ja was saying, some of your classmates that clowns you, you can tell them, you can clown them now. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's, I just want y'all to stay focused, man. Um, I don't, I really, I really care about all the students that I speak to, man. Heart to heart, man. Y'all might see me on this rap and stuff and see another side of me. That's entertainment. But when it comes down to it, you know what I mean? I'm here not because of no money, not because of nothing. Blake is my man. I don't know where Blake went, but I graduated from Elizabeth High School with Blake. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I came out here. I told him, you know what I'm saying? He told me, of course, they know John Wee does the speaking all the time. He just told me that some of y'all need some type of guidance. I told him, you know what I mean, let me know when I clear my schedule, I talk to Josh so he can clear his schedule, we can just come talk to y'all, man, so y'all can focus. I mean, I really don't have too much else to say. I just really want y'all to take heed to everything that this man said, because it's real. Like he said, outside these doors, you know what I'm saying, we been, we bang, you know what I'm saying? Me and John, we in opposite gangs, but we got more respect than, you know I mean, that's like my brother, and I mean that. And he'll tell you, that's like my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, I just want y'all to, you know what I mean? Out of a hundred of y'all, only, only probably seven of y'all is really gonna take heed to what we said, but at the end of the day, if it touched seven of y'all and it changed seven of y'all lives, that's all that really mattered to me, man. I just want y'all to do good. I don't wanna hear about, you know what I'm saying? I don't want the principals of Blake calling me, telling me none of the kids that was in the assembly that y'all spoke to just got killed because they was out here trying to sell drugs or out here trying to gangbang and all that, man. That's not the message we're trying to put to y'all. You know I'm saying we did that, we've been there. It ain't the way to go, man. It's not. It's really not. So I'm gonna just end on that. You know what I'm saying?
I'm sorry for y'all, man. If, if y'all wanted that question asked, why y'all was scared? Why she had to ask it? Nah, I gotta keep it clean, though. I gotta keep it clean and motivational, man, because that's what I'm here for, man. Nah, I gotta keep it clean, man. Nah, but seriously, uh, just, it's just about everything, you know what I mean? Just, um, you know. <laughs> Alright, I said, uh, every day is like the same thing. Deja vu. It's Crips here, and right across the street they die move. Shots fired and they rioting when they ride through. Innocent kids caught in crossfires, they die too. Now it's a shame how this world can care less about an education. When Martin Luther did all his fighting on segregation. But all it takes is a little focus and dedication. A little interest in learning, practice and preparation. You see, they ride the depression check and the devastation and get addicted to raw drugs and medications. This is a message to black people in every nation, Jamaican, African American, and every Haitian. This is a message to black people.